overhaul and for the first time revises his now broken promise, if you like your plan, you can keep your plan, now has a whole bunch of qualifiers directly from the president. Hi, Megan Kelly. Welcome, everybody. This is The Kelly File. The president is just returning from Boston at this hour after wrapping up a fiery and at times highly partisan speech about his health care law. It took nearly 20 minutes before he addressed the newest Obamacare controversy. What about that now infamous pledge that was at the heart of this law's passage that if you like your doctor, you can keep your, daughter, your doctor. If you like your insurance, you can keep your insurance, he said repeatedly. I guarantee it, period. But it's not true. Two million so far have lost, lost their plans, and that number is expected to grow. It could top 10 million, could top 14 million. Here's how the president explained the issue today. Now, if you had one of these substandard plans before the Affordable Care Act became law, and you really liked that plan, you were able to keep it. That's what I said when I was running for office. That was part of the promise we made. Mm -hmm. The president had little choice but to speak to the issue somehow. Even the Washington Post fact checker today labeled Mr. Obama's many guarantees on this issue a, quote, whopper, giving it four out of four Pinocchios, saying his promise apparently came with a very large caveat. If you like your health care plan, you'll be able to keep your health care plan if, if we, the government, deem it to be adequate. Meantime, back in Boston, President Obama expanded today on what that promise really means now. And today that promise means that every plan in the marketplace covers a core set of minimum benefits. A core set of minimum benefits. All of the plans will now cover that. But what happened to all those people who were supposed to keep their plans that maybe didn't cover all the benefits and they didn't care? Well, it turns out someone decided for them that their insurance just didn't work. Washington didn't like it. The government wanted those Americans to have something different. So here is the new promise tonight. For the vast majority of people who have health insurance that works, you can keep it. For the fewer than 5% of Americans who buy insurance on your own, you will be getting a better deal. So just take it, enjoy it, and be quiet. <laughs> Mark Thiessen is a fellow at the American Enterprise Institute and a former speechwriter for President George W. Bush. Yeah, so now the vast majority are going to get to keep it. And for those five, mm -hmm. those pesky 5% that keep complaining, just enjoy if Obamacare. What, why do you keep complaining? <laughs> the vast majority. He didn't say anything about the vast majority in 2009. He said, if you like your plan, you'll get to keep it no matter what, period. There was nothing about a vast majority. So this speech was an exercise in dishonesty and revisionist history. And look, Megan, do you remember George W. Bush's famous 16 words on Iraq? Well, Barack Obama now has 16 words he needs to answer for. If you like your health care plan, you'll be able to keep your health care plan. Six, with those 16 words, he lied us into Obamacare. And you feel that this was no accident. I know you believe it was a lie, yeah. that it wasn't an unintentional falsehood. That it was mm -hmm. a lie, and you believe it was intentional, it was designed because they knew all along that yep. this was going to happen in the individual insurance market, and not only did they know it, they needed it. Yes, absolutely. And look, he almost admitted it because he said, look, if you're, if you're one, he said today, quote, if you're losing one, what, you're getting one of those letters, cancellation letters, just join Obamacare. That was their, pl first of all, you can't join Obamacare because the website doesn't work, mm -hmm. but if you could, that was their plan all along. Because the problem is, in the individual market, most of those people are healthy people who don't use a lot of services. In order to fund Obamacare, they need at least 2 million people, healthy people who don't use a lot of services, to leave the individual market and join the exchanges so they can cover and subsidize the poor and the sick. Well, as you pointed out, 2 million people are losing their plans. It's the perfect number, and they're going to be more. So all those people are becoming coming in, and they wrote the regulation specifically to make sure that those people lose their plans so they have to go nowhere, they have nowhere else to go but to go to Obamacare. It's fascinating because you hear these testimonials time and time again of the reason I chose the plan that was not so great is because mm -hmm. I'm pretty healthy, my wife's pretty healthy, yep. and we don't use a lot of insurance and we basically just have it there just in case. And we yeah. chose the plan that worked for us so we could have a low premium and so on. And and so your, your feeling is the administration also mm -hmm. understood that and said, 
those are exactly the kind of people we need to pay more to fund exactly. the expanding Medicaid rules we're going to have mm -hmm. under Obamacare and the government subsidies that we're promising under Obamacare. And there's only one way to get them, and that's to somehow get them out of the insurance plan they have while I'm running out there telling everybody yep. they can keep the plan they have. No, that's exactly right. And he was saying, talking today about substandard plans. And so what they're doing is they're pushing these people out of pl what they call substandard plans into these plans with all these mandates like maternity care, substance abuse care, vision care. Well, what if you're a guy who's healthy and doesn't plan to get pregnant, doesn't use drugs, and has 20-20 vision? You don't need all that stuff. And then what they're doing is they're pushing you into the exchanges where you're going to get all that stuff you don't need and don't want, and in a lot of cases, subsidized by the taxpayers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's Which is, what they're doing. Well, that's a true irony, is that you, you actually have Americans who were paying the full bill on their own premiums and happy with their coverage. Now that exactly. coverage has been canceled, they're going to have to move over to the government exchanges. The American taxpayer is now going to have to subsidize a policy that they it's don't a, want and don't need. That's yes, the situation we're going to be subsidizing we maternity in. care for guys like me. Congratulations. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for that image. See, see you, Mark. <laughs> Thanks, Megan. Well, before the president went to Boston, his health and human services secretary went to Capitol Hill. She had to face her critics, too, all about the problems with the health care rollout and questions about her responsibility here and the president's. Watch. So you're saying that the president is not responsible for HHS? Sir, I didn't say that. Okay. So the president ultimately is responsible. While I think it's great that you're a team player and you're taking responsibility, it is the president's ultimate responsibility, correct? Um, you clearly, uh, whatever. Yes, he is the president. He is responsible for government program. Texas Congressman Joe Barton was one of those questioning Ms. Sebelius. He's a Republican member of the House Energy and Commerce Committee. One of that comments, or whatever, uh, there's been a lot of talk about that today because some suggest it was dismissive of her. It conveyed an attitude of, why do I have to be here in front of you people? Well, it goes to the heart of the Obama administration. They're more into perception and feeling than they are into governing. I use the line about the, the Wizard of Oz, that, you know, in Oz it's more important what the perception is than the reality is. Uh, and the Secretary today obviously felt that we should just believe her and the President that they want to help all these people and not really pin her down on what the real reality well, is. Well, here's what I want to know. Because she said, hold me accountable. You know, for the first time she said, okay, I'm responsible, hold me accountable. How? How? Because they say that she still has the confidence of the White House. He's apparently not ready to fire her. No one's getting fired, even though we've wasted hundreds of millions of dollars on the, of the taxpayers' money on a website that doesn't work while we're canceling people's insurance. Who will be held accountable? Well, ultimately, she'll be held accountable, and the president will be held oh. accountable. This, this website thing is a debacle. Obamacare is, is not what they portrayed it to be. The president said if you like your health plan and your doctor, you can keep it, and now he said, well... You know, only if, oh, but we only know if all we that. Respectfully, sir, we it. know all that. The question is, how will they be held accountable? I mean, she says, I'm accountable. Hold me accountable. How? I mean, it, oh, can well, Barack gonna... Obama, he's the only one who can do it. Is there pressure on him to do it? it? Do you believe she should be fired? If not, who should be? Where is the accountability? Well, the, you know, we're going to bring the secretary back before the Energy and Commerce Committee in December after this, their own self-imposed no, end of November deadline that the website's supposed to be up. Uh, Chairman Upton and I and several other members of the committee just sent the secretary a letter based on the testimony of the contractors last week. Uh, Chairman of the Intelligence Committee, Mike Rogers, asked her a series of questions today We're about to the security. We're going to get to that in a minute. Yeah, I got, a I got her to commit that they're, yeah, they're going to fix their, their lack of privacy. I did. That's one thing that she did positively agree to do today, that... Uh, uh, the, you know, the, the code that says no reasonable expectation of personal privacy, she said that was wrong. They're going to take that out. Right, because uh, they basically you know, have you sign away your, your own expectations of privacy when you get onto a, the Obamacare Exchange website. And there are people who are on there right now, they have no choice but to be on there because they just got canceled, so they got to go on. And, then, and in order to go on, they have to sacrifice all their privacy and sign a little waiver. Exactly. You got rid of that. Congress, Although so she did say here. that that was wrong, and they'll, they'll fix that. All right, sir. Thank you for being here. Thank you. And we want to hear your Obamacare stories. Tell us what you're experiencing signing up for a plan. Good, bad, ugly, in between. Go to Facebook.com slash The Kelly File or send me a tweet at Megan Kelly, hashtag The Kelly File. We are reading all of your stories and we'll try to investigate some of your issues, so keep them coming. And Charles Krauthammer says there is much, much more on the line for the president than just getting people insured.